Hello, I am Modai for 3 or Comedias and welcome to Dear Esther. Uh, so let's start up the first chapter and yeah, this is a storytelling game, kind of a you can interact with the world and discover new areas and as you discover the new areas you will see that a bit of story like unfolds Dear Esther The morning after I was washed ashore salt in my ears, sand in my mouth and the waves always at my ankles I felt as though everything had conspired to this one last shipwreck I remembered nothing but water, stones in my belly and my shoes threatening to drag me under to where only the most listless of creatures swim So yeah, I actually already played the first level of the game. Ch check out the game and things like that. And basically the game like changes every time you play it. Because you do stuff in the different order or something like that. It's, I think the game is really cool. Uh, can I turn that now? Okay, let's... Seat. 2H5OH I think that's ethanol ethanol or something like that if I remember chemistry it's kind of a scare like basically a ghost game you could say oh wow So, mm, there's this story in the game. You could say it's a book, but it's interactive. And it has this hidden story and mystery and all that. Slight FPS drop. Let's get over on the edge here and... Donnelly reported the legend of the Hermit, a holy man who sought solitude in its most pure form. Allegedly, he rode here from the mainland in a boat without a bottom, so all the creatures of the sea could rise at night to converse with him. How disappointed he must have been with their chatter. Perhaps now, when all that haunts the ocean is the rubbish dumped from the tankers, he'd find more peace. They say he threw his arms wide in a valley on the south side and the cliff opened up to provide him shelter. They say he died of fever 116 years later. The shepherds left gifts for him at the mouth of the cave, but Donnelly records they never claim to have seen him. I have visited the cave and I have left my gifts, but like them, I appear to be an unworthy subject of his solitude. There are these like, mysterious story parts of a story. And you have to like discover the the map. Can't get over here. Yeah, let's go back. So if I discover a new area or something, I will sort of unlock a bit of story. Oh. Can I get over here? No, oh, I guess I can't. Oh. So, let's continue on the beach then.
It has this unique feel to it. It's sort of mysterious. All the lighting and shadows and s stuff like that are really well done. Adds this nice feel to the game. Natural. Really beautiful on the Zion. Those islands in the distance, I'm sure, are nothing more than relics of another time, sleeping giants, somnambulist gods laid down for a final dreaming. I wash the sand from my lips and grip my wrist ever more tightly. My shaking arms will not support my fading diaries. And also the music plays some really well. So this game actually first started as a mod for uh, Half Half Light 2 and this guy came across the game and really liked it so he did upgraded the visual aspects of the game and upgraded about everything Have, has these like mysterious markers and all this all across the game. It's like all about exploring. Dear Esther, I found myself to be as featureless as this ocean, as shallow and unoccupied as this bay, a listless wreck without identification. My rocks are these bones, and a careful fence to keep the precipice at bay. Shot through me caves. My forehead a mount. This aerial will transmit into me so. All overexposed, the nervous system, where Donnelly's boots and yours and mine still travel. I will carry a torch for you. I will leave it at the foot of my headstone. You will need it for the tunnels that carry me under. So this story is really like mystical and abstract and you really have to listen intense, very intensely to it and to understand it because the speaking kind of like other words they mean something else when they tell when they tell the story but yeah This game looks really beautiful. We will see later in this the first chapter. And then to me also after the first chapter will be new and mysterious, you could say. And also the story like changes depending on with which path I go. At the beginning you saw that I could go up the mountain or go on the shore instead. But if I had gone on the shore I wouldn't have seen the cave or the ocean like as he tells some story about the things. So it's new every time you play it. Donnelly's book had not been taken out from the library since 1974. I decided it would never be missed as I slipped it under my coat and avoided the librarian's gaze on the way out. If the subject matter is obscure, the writer's literary style is even more so. It is not the text of a stable or trustworthy reporter. Perhaps it is fitting that my only companion in these last days should be a stolen book written by a dying man. When someone had died or was dying, or was so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice, they cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. 
You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boat and know to send aid or impose a cordon of protection and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff paths died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. I guess he talks about the cut-out parts there on the mountain that so shows the chalk or what he's talking about. Mm, I thought you could activate the like some smooth, smoother mouse thing. That way, the game would be more enjoyable. So the game would become more and more scary and like mysterious throughout the game I think. That will be fun to deal with. <laughs> we are not like Lot's wife, you and I. We feel no particular need to turn back. There's nothing to be seen if we did. No tired old man parting the cliffs with his arms. No gifts or bibles laid out on the sand for the taking. No tides turning or the shrieking gulls overhead. The bones of the hermit are no longer laid out for the taking. I have stolen them away to the guts of this island, where the passages all run to black, and where we can light each other's faces by their strange luminescence. I think that's the cave that we saw from up there before. Dear Esther, I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. This hermit, this seer, this distant historian of bones and old bread, where did he vanish to? Why, asked the farmers, why, asked Jacobson, why bother with your visions at all, if you're just to throw your arms up at the cliff and let it close in behind you and seal you into the belly of the island, a museum shut to all but the most devoted? This cave is, like, really cool. I think is this is the same ethanol. This must be the gifts that people like gave gave to the hermit that, that lived I think it was the escape he lived in.
He still maintains he wasn't drunk, but tired. I can't make the judgment or the distinction anymore. I was drunk when I landed here, and tired too. I walked up the cliff path in near darkness and camped in the bay where the trawler lies beached. It was only at dawn that I saw the bothy and decided to make my temporary lodgings there. I was expecting just the area and a transmitter stashed in a weatherproof box somewhere on the mount. It had an air of uneasy permanence to it. Like all the other buildings here, erosion seems to have evaded it completely. Weird sounds sometimes that like scares me. <laughs> <laughs> 